Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Valangi Art. Um, back to the classroom management series. Um, I am going to talk about interview questions. Um, these are questions that are asked um, by administrators to teachers um, during the interview process. I feel like this information is very useful, um, especially if you're a first year teacher. Um, you're applying in the fall for your first um, teaching position. Um, it kind of better prepares you um, to kind of hear what's in this video. It also helps you not be so nervous. Um, and um, the questions pertain to any teacher, um, aid in the classroom, or assistant teachers. Um, all these questions may be asked um, during the interview process. Um, I hope you find the information useful. Definitely don't forget to hit that subscribe button at the end, guys. Um, and let's basically uh, dive into it. So we are going to get into um, questions that could be asked. Um, it's always good to kind of bring a um, pen and a paper to an interview um, to be able to um, write down kind of their answers. At the end, usually they'll ask you um, a few questions um, if you have any questions. So it's good to kind of write some questions down that you may have for the school or administrators um, that are interviewing you as well, because um, that question will be asked um, at the end. So um, some of the questions they may ask, um, starting with question one, how will you get a child inspired by your subject? Um, so a lot of administrators want to know that you can take the subject that you are passionate about and make it come alive. So how do you do that? Um, usually they want to hear that you don't just have one way of teaching, where, like you're getting up there in front of the whole class, which is the regular way to teach. You're kind of lecturing in front of everybody um, up in the front of the room um, and giving instruction, and then everybody's sitting in front of you. That's the, um, the normal way of teaching, kind of the typical way, kind of old school way. They want to hear um, how do you teach um, all your different methods of teaching. Um, they also want to hear your lesson plan. Like, how do you lesson plan? Um, how often do you lesson plan? Um, lesson plans are really about how you pace your curriculum. Um, so they want to really hear a lot of details about that. Um, so lesson planning, and then also um, some special activities that might that you might do for your class. Um, maybe you've done at other schools. They will definitely want to hear about that because um, they'll want to integrate it into their school. Um, so just some ideas. So another question that seems to pop up is, what are some of the different instructional methods you will use to engage the students you have? Um, so they want to hear how many different ways do you teach the class? Um, do you reach all your learners? So in some other videos, I've mentioned there's different types of learners. So you have your auditory learners, your visual learners, um, the ones that are a little more quiet, they don't want to talk in front of the class. Um, so all different types of learners. And then you have some students that love to talk. Um, so are you going to um, make a plan to kind of integrate everybody's interests, all the different learners? How are you going to do that? Um, they want to hear um, in detail how you do that. Do you do, um, do collaborative work in your class? Do you like to get up and teach just in front of the class? Um, do you like to do a lot of group work? Um, so it's never too much detail. Um, I would just dive into it and talk about it, um, all the different ways you teach um, your class. Um, they also want to hear how you kind of engage those students that have less of an interest in your subject um, and how are you going to connect with them. So you may have a whole class that's really interested in what you're talking about, but then you might have that one student that is not very interested at all. And they kind of want to hear, how are you going to reach that one student? Um, 
but at the same time you're trying to reach that one student are you able to still teach the rest of the class at the same time which can be quite tricky um, so that's another question that comes up um, during a lot of interviews so um, this question may be asked in the beginning of your interview what inspires you to be a teacher um, so everyone's story is different um, I always like to tell my story that I, I had never really planned to be a teacher my first goal was to be an artist um, and that being said being an artist first and a teacher kind of second it makes me even a stronger teacher because I'm able to teach the process of doing art um, to students very easily because I'm an artist first and kind of a teacher second um, but the two are it's a huge passion both of them teaching and be doing art myself um, so the two really have worked well going hand in hand when it's comes to forming a career so it's um, you this is a question that you kind of want to get a little personal uh, maybe a personal story you want to share um, with the administration when you're interviewing as well so what is one strength and one weakness they will ask you that question so it can be anything it could be are you on time to work um, it could be how do you run your classroom are there strengths and weaknesses um, and they want to see that you know no, no one's perfect so you're gonna have some weakness um, somewhere and they just want to hear that you can reflect on that and it's something that you're improving on and really for teachers every year you're improving on something nobody's a perfect teacher because um, every t every year and I think a lot of teachers can agree with me um, that you are improving every year um, on your curriculum how you plan how are you even more inventive with your class um, and your activities um, and how are you connecting with your students in all so it, it's constantly changing every year um, so it's never something you have down to a science and it's perfected um, because it's always a new school year and I think that's why you know teaching can be very exciting because it never is the same school year um, and that's kind of the exciting part of being a teacher is in my opinion um, but definitely this is a question to think about so one strength one weakness um, and that's it moving on to the next slide okay so this question usually is asked to elective teachers so that's your gym teacher your music teacher art teacher um, these are the teachers that teach every single student usually in the entire building um, so as an art teacher I'm always asked how do you feel about working with multiple grade levels because I've never worked at a school and it's just one grade um, I have always taught either 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, or K through 5th, or it is um, 6th, 7th, and 8th, um, the middle school group. So it's always multiple grade levels. Um, if you are one of those teachers, they want to hear that you can multitask and you can transition your lessons um, very quickly. Um, especially if you're an art teacher, they want to hear that you can um, kind of switch materials quickly. Um, because transitions between classes are um, it's only about five minutes so they want to hear that you can prep for that um, a way around that just um, to share some ideas I always prep for the whole day um, especially when you're teaching multiple um, grade levels some art teachers actually prep for the whole week so Monday through Friday they know what they're teaching each grade um, because there's not a lot of time to wash brushes there's not a lot of time to kind of wash tables down um, before your next class gets there um, it's very fast paced uh, very fast paced another question is how do you deal with behavior in the classroom um, so you have a student that might be coming in um, that has had a rough morning they want to um, know how you would handle the behavior in the classroom um, you also might be teaching a lesson and a student is disturbing the lesson 
Um, they may be making noises or tapping their pencils um, or just interrupting you while you're talking. Um, they want to hear how you kind of deal with those issues as they arise as you're teaching um, because those behaviors will happen in a classroom. Um, so you have to be prepared in answering that question for the administration um, as well. So um, my, the last question that I'm going over is, why are you choosing to work at our school? They always ask this. Um, it's always good to kind of look up the school, um, where you're working, look at their website, um, look at what they're all about. Um, I've worked at multiple different schools, um, and I've worked with ro uh, schools in the rural areas um, and then city areas, and um, all very different. There are different types of schools too. Um, there are charter schools, there's public schools, and then there's private schools. Um, they all um, work a little bit differently, um, but you do want to tell them why you chose their school. Um, and, and so I think when you're a first year teacher, you don't realize there's all these different types of schools. At, at least I didn't. Um, and like I said, I'm coming in being an artist, then a teacher, and I, I didn't know any of this. So uh, ch there are charter schools, public schools, and private schools. Um, and they do want to hear why you chose their school. Um, and is it the location? Is it the kids? Um, is it because they're uh, specialized in either science or art or math or whatever their specialty is at that school? Um, so you want to kind of be prepared to answer that question as well. I really hope this, um, these slides kind of helped you. Um, and I'm going to move on to the last two slides. And I am thanking you for joining me. So definitely, thank you for watching. Um, definitely hit com com you can comment below. Um, I would love to read any comments. Um, I would, like I said, I would like this to be more of like a conversation, even if all it is is um, through typing. Um, definitely hit share, um, especially if you have a teacher first getting into the education industry. Uh, definitely share my video um, and hit subscribe as well. And I'm going to talk about some of the services that I do provide um, if you decide to join this channel. So I am call, uh, doing a call to action. Um, I don't normally do this, but I'm doing a call to action to possibly um, hit that join button. It's right up um, on the top. Um, what do I provide for membership opportunities for you? I provide templates. So templates you, you can use in your classroom. The templates you see you can use year in and year out um, throughout your teaching career. Um, I'm going to have uh, lesson plan templates, um, all different types, and some art templates because that's my specialty. Um, all different classroom resources, also websites, um, will be on there as well. So um, if you really like my content um, and you have just been following each video, please consider just um, hitting that join button. Um, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I will see all of you in the next video. Bye.